ready? Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, the video game music podcast. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. And every week we get together, we listen to great video game music from all generations and from all consoles and from computer systems and arcades. We listen to it all. Except for that bad stuff, because ain't nobody got time for that. No. Sometimes I do bring interesting things like that to the table, but that's just to mess with Rob. No other reason. <laughs> um, no, you always bring great music. In fact, it was the great music f- that you brought from the last episode, which was the Neo Geo episode. Oh. That inspired today's episode, which is just golf. No one would not have expected golf to bring about such spectacular audio goodness. I beg- and yet, here we are. <laughs> I beg to differ because... Um, if I'm a big fan of the podcast, The Legacy Music Hour, and they played some tracks from a game called Pebble Beach Golf Links for the Sega Genesis, and I love that music. It's so good. Oh, so you were raring to go when the topic came. It wasn't even. It wasn't even a surprise. It was like, oh, golf, yeah, Pebble Beach. Well, I know there's stuff out there. I didn't. I didn't pick from that game. I think we have played from that game in the past, but I, I wanted to look and, ex- and explore because I know that sports games have some amazing soundtracks. Whoa. And in fact, if you go and listen to the other podcast, Forever Sound Version, he just did a focus on NBA games from the '90s. <laughs> That's all it is. It's amazing. There was a whole lot of boom shaka lock, and I assume then. Who knew that some guy from Newcastle out there in the UK uh, would love um, uh, NBA? Good old American basketball. Hey, we all know he's a guy of eclectic taste. So yeah. at this point, it shouldn't surprise us at all. I mean, distinctive taste. He like I, who, he, I could picture him going. Who would have thought that a <laughs> Yank from the states would have such a fond appreciation for tea products? And I'd tell him. You better have because you, <laughs> could, you know how to do that. So. Well, this episode is coming out June 26th. So if you were at Too Many Games visiting us, thank you very much. We appreciated seeing you. I'm glad um, I got to shake your hand and say hi. And I'm glad I was able to yell into your ears and make him bleed joyfully. And I joyfully. Would li- <laughs> and I would like to apologize now for all the times that I removed my shirt and started cursing. And the times I removed Purnell's shirt and started cursing. Sometimes it just, when there's a lot of cursing to be done, you don't want to pack that many shirts. It's hot outside. It's hot in here right now. Yeah. Well, you know what's fun? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about TNG. Anyway, um, golf. So, today's just golf music. Actually, it's kind of funny that this topic is golf, too. I didn't think about that. It's worth mentioning. Why's that? Um, a couple days ago, I kind of decided I wanted to get up and just go. Just get out. You know, just to clear my head. And I decided to go to a place I found a couple of years ago. It was like a random park I found, but I forgot where it was. In this area or somewhere else? It's in Pennsylvania, actually. Okay, okay. So I pulled out a map. Yeah. Like old-fashioned style, but internet-wise because <laughs> who sells maps <laughs> Old-fashioned style on my iPhone. Yeah, on, on the old iPhone. <laughs> um, and I yeah, pretty yeah. much pinpointed the general area where the park was located. Mm-hmm. And then I drove out there and just kind of explored until I found it. Okay. So I proceeded to get out of my car and walk around and explore. And I was walking through like meadows and fields and blah, blah, blah. And I eventually came out in a clearing and I just snuck onto a prestigious golf course. <laughs> so, like, you just happened to walk out on the golf course? Onto the golf course. That's amazing. And I was, was, was anyone playing or did anyone see you? Way off in the distance, I saw <laughs> cars, like golf carts moving around and stuff. So, for a while, I just kind of doped oh, around. Amazing. I found one of those sand combs just lying on the ground. I was like, I'm the king of the world. So, I twirled the sand comb. Oh, that's great. And I eventually bolted because, like, I don't need these guys to find me and then lock me up in their secret basement of the damned where they will proceed to experiment on me and learn how poor people function. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, golf does have that, that um, I guess, stigma or stereotype of being just for the wealthy. But it, it, it is it is still like an everyman sport. Like, like everybody can play this game. Like there's, there's so many golf courses around this area that you can just, I think it's like five, ten bucks. You can just go play like, you know, 18 holes. I think the reason where the sti- the place where the stigma comes from, though, is both country clubs because that's usually right. where people would talk about right. them existing. Which they just shut this one down. So ah, see, too Fight. many poor people. They couldn't afford upkeep. Fight the power. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be country clubs, and also just the cost of getting your own clubs because golf clubs in general aren't very cheap. No, that's true. That is true. Um, 
yeah I, I think the only people i know who have golf clubs were like they were like came down through their family one friend of mine got his through goodwill which would almost be the same thing they came from somebody that had money and then they donated them and then he found them and put them to use oh cool but that's a i don't think that's a common thing no so well i think like i don't know i don't think you need like a full set of clubs let's let's talk a more let's let's talk golf during some golf music I hear that. All right, so this is nine dash one. This is the start of World Nine. I got a feeling this is going to be a rather sporty world. Yeah, why don't, why don't you start us off then? Actually, it's kind of funny if you say that because based on the statement you made earlier, I know what first track I should go with. About taking my shirt off? Yeah, let's go with it. Okay. Because cool. <laughs> like half of my songs are about nudity, so continue. That'll be confusing. Yeah, I don't want you copying me now. This is I'm trying to be original. Well, guess what? <laughs> Everything that's been done has already been done. Oh. So too bad. Uh, this track is from Everybody's Golf 6. That's what I was referring to. Everybody's Golf. Yeah, that's the Japanese title. The American title is Hot Shots Golf World Invitational. Oh, cool. But because of what you said earlier, I had to say Everybody's <laughs> Golf. Because golf's for everybody. I like um, it. And this track is called Al Arabian Golf Club. And it was composed by Hidehiro Kawai. <laughs> At the Al Arabian Golf Club from the game Hot Shots Golf World Invitational, composed by Hidehiro Kawai. This track is my favorite, hands down, from this video game. Really, this is all—it's really fun. I, I like the uh, the like. There's that cool guitar that we were talking about during the track, mm -hmm. and then there's that the piano sections, and that rock drum is really clear, really crisp. It comes together perfectly. Like this is, um, if I remember correctly, this unlocks door in the fourth rank that you access in the game. Yeah, so it's further on. Yeah, and I don't know if I'll ever get back to that again because my safe pot got erased. <laughs> and golf, for the record, golf is supposed to be a relaxing game. Yeah, you're supposed to just go out in the course, take your club, and just swing at the ball. Like, just goes wherever, and you just relax and hope that you get a decent score. But whatever is fun. Well, I mean, like. I, 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 in my mind, I, I put it together with like bowling, where it's like, it's very meditative. Yeah. Yeah. It, it can be, but like you're very focused on what you're doing. My problem, however, even in video game form, is that I expect below par on every hole. We're talking <laughs> eagles or birdies. Mm. Maybe even albatross if I'm exceptionally lucky. <laughs> um, but if I go above par or par, you get upset. I might get upset and restart the whole oh, game. Oh, you like you rage quit. Restart. I rage quit. Maybe not so much the no, rage, we'll but I just quit. Um, because I don't get angry. I'm just like, well, I need that, that's ruined my score. Time to start over. Oh, so man. it takes me a long time before I'm actually comfortable saying, you know what? I made a mistake on the 13th hole. I'm not resetting at this point. Let's just keep going. But it just takes me forever to make progress in golf games for that reason. Well, but, there's something about like, golf. In video games, it just translates like so well, and and they've been doing it since like um, 
since the, since the NES. Remember the like golf, just golf for the NES? With Mario on the cover? Yeah, yeah. I used to play that with my brother, like, all the time. And it gets super competitive. It really for, does. And it's like, um, it's a lot like pinball, right? Where you're, it's one of those super competitive games where you're, you're taking turns, but you're watching each other take each other's turns very intensely. Because you want to watch them make mistakes so you can avoid the same ones. Yeah, or you're, or you're like, oh, that was a good shot. I'm going to try that too, you know? Yep. And it's a beautiful thing. And of course, as we all know, in video game golf, the real game is that green. Oh, getting to the putt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Reading that green. Pulling it off, pulling one out of nowhere, because honestly, let's be let's be honest here. No one ever gets one a hole in ones intentionally. Oh, and the, oh man, I yeah, it's there's too many fat, there's too many factors, there's too many uh, variables. Mm-hmm. Totally. Anybody getting a hole in one got lucky. If they claim otherwise, they're lying to you. Have you ever played golf? Real golf? No, but I kind of imagine that if I did, I I'd, I'd kill somebody because <laughs> my gamer tendencies would translate to the green. And the first time I whiff on hitting the ball on tee off, I might just crawl. It's really uh, it's super challenging for someone just starting out. I used to go to the driving range a lot. Oh, the driving range I've been to before, and that's actually fun. Yeah, it's that's a lot of fun. Yeah, how far I can hit the ball? Yeah, how straight you can get it, and, that, and that's really good. Kind of kind of gets you prepared for actually actually doing it. But yeah, so golf games like really chill chill soundtracks and and all my tracks are from the 16-bit era and they all kind of fit that bill but i'm gonna start with one that's shorter it's more of like a stinger you know what i'm talking about like a kind of like an in-between track a stinger we're talking bumblebees here um no they call that like in radio like when it's like uh, um you're listening to 94.5 robin Purnell, the the wizard <laughs> oh i do like those Hey, welcome back. You're listening to KKBBL, The Rocket Sauce. (laughs) (laughs) The Rocket Sauce. So this is um, Runaway from Hal's Hole-in-One Golf for the Super Nintendo, composed by Hirokazu Ando. This is called Runaway from Hal's Hole-in-One Golf for the Super Nintendo, composed by Hirokazu Ando. Yeah, it's only like 30 seconds, but there's so much going on in that 30 seconds. There's like a, that crazy pitch bending on the bass, and there's um, those chords. It sounds like um, like future hip-hop or, or, or like new music that's coming out now under the, uh, the Nest HQ label, if, if anyone out there listens to that. It's really frantic and really jazzy at the same time. Really like it. I'm actually just enjoying the fact that it was like ridiculously short. It almost makes up for how long my track was. <laughs> but I do like it. And we still haven't figured out who Hal is. Are we talking Hal from Hal Laboratories, the company? Or is it just some guy on Hal, like some guy named Hal saying, Welcome to my golf course, friends. Well Enjoy yourself. I can tell you, but you have to do that voice for about two minutes for me to find out. You better start looking. <laughs> Hal's getting bored. Hurry, 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 hurry! This golf course isn't paying for itself, bub. Why was I bored with this awful yeah, voice? I, I was right. It was. <laughs> this is Hal's Hal Laboratories. The, 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 the developer. Ah. That's a good thing. About it, cause I was worried for a second. I was like, wait a freaking minute. <laughs> I actually don't mind a lot. I kind of wish it was a guy named Hal. Yeah. The, the fun, I just came up with this awesome guy, and now we're just like, he's dead. He doesn't even exist. It's actually Hal Laboratories. Oh, so he's dead. Yeah. Hal Laboratories killed him to Do replace you, him and make their own oh, golf course. Oh, I see. So, like, they were um, they were conducting, like, trying to create a super golfer? No, no, no. Hal was an old, just a kindly old guy who ran a golf course. Right. And turn it into a video game franchise, it's a little small thing. That's the dream, isn't it? That's the dream. Living <laughs> the American dream. And then Al Laboratories came along with their Kirby money. <laughs> their Kirby and money. And decided they wanted to step on his toes. Look here, buddy. Here's here's $50. We're taking over this business. Oh, You're out of here. And he's like, no, I like my business. 
It pays my bills. My children love me. They call me, hey, dad. Hey, dad. <laughs> Thank you so much for putting food on the table in your luxury golf course or whatever you would do. And then Al LaBorza wasn't having that. So No, he doesn't love him. He loves golf. He loves golf, but it translates well to the kids, so it doesn't matter. Oh, well. And uh, but then the company wasn't having that, so they had him put down. <laughs> they <laughs> they and, let him go permanently. Permanently. And right. then along came... This course, this place, which little known was actually based on an actual golf course, which no longer exists. So, oh, right. Yeah, see? Located still... in um, Pensacola, Florida. No, Key West, man. Come on. Oh, Key West. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful place to have your golf course taken over by a megalomaniacal company. Man. Things, things, things went for a dark, dark, dark turn. Can you maybe take us to a, to a nicer place? I'll do my best here, actually. I can try. All right. So, my next track is from another favorite of mine that I've enjoyed playing quite a bit. I just need to get back to it because it's been a long time. Super Swing Golf. Oh. And the track is just called Spring. It's kind of sad here because I have two written down, and I'm hoping I just said the right one, but we'll <laughs> find out. Super Swing Golf, and this is for the Wii. Well, the bathroom's just down the hall. Yeah, and while I'm in there, <laughs> there's stuff. No, no, the Nintendo Wii. And it's composed by Shige Kiyo Okuda and Yutaka Fujishima. Welcome back. You're getting into that Super Swing Golf mood with the track Spring from Super Swing Golf. <laughs> it's composed by Shige Kiyo Okuda and Yutaka Fujishima. Yeah, this, Th is, this is awesome. This, this is, to me, what golf music is. You know, like, this, is, this is what I think of when I think of golf music. And this game is a perfect way to play it, at least it was for me. Some most, a lot of people actually would disagree with me because this game is actually the U.S. translation of what, at least at the time, was a Korean free-to-play PC golf game called <laughs> Pangia Fantasy Golf. Okay. And on the Wii version of it, this was back when the Wii was new, and they were trying to push the idea of, hey, who wants to play games that have motion controls like you're actually doing the thing? Oh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of those. <laughs> so with this game, it was like you're actually golfing, quote-unquote. So you have to hold the Wii remote pointing downward, and you have to actually do the wind-up and the swing. And obviously you can cheese it like most people did in those games, but sure. I got into it full steam ahead. I'm like, what a shot! <laughs> Aim the, the boy! I was really into this game. I was obsessed with it. And it's an awesome, awesome product. And it had a sequel come out called like Season 2, but I never ended up getting it because I was still playing Season 1. I didn't need a sequel. Yeah. It was most likely just more content from the free-to-play game, honestly. Well, that's interesting because like, a lot of... A lot of these golf mechanics have, like, you hit a button for how hard you're going to hit it, and then you hit a button for, like, 
your accuracy. And then, like, every golf game is that way. But then this is different. This is motion control. Well, it, I mean, the motion controls essentially kind of mimic that same logic, but you almost don't care because you're just enjoying the fact that you're kind of swinging. Because, like, I recall, right. like, for example, when you go into right. the swing, you have to hold the A button. And I, I remember correctly, depending on how far back you went into your swing to determine the power or something oh, okay. like that, there were things that it translated. Yeah, I guess, like, you couldn't, like, aim the ball in a different direction because then you'd be, like, facing away from the TV. <laughs> you almost could huh. by – because what it was was, like, you would set up where you wanted the ball to go using the, the pointer. Okay. And when you hit the ball – Depending on how you tilted the Wiimote when you went into your swing, determine on whether or not if you put a spin on it or not. Hmm. So it was, it was honestly, at least at the time, it was pretty intuitive, is my opinion, because I hadn't played a game like that before, aside from Wii Golf, which had only come out maybe a month prior. So it, to me, this was a very solid and enjoyable game. And let me think here, thinking back on it, aside from the Mario Golf games and Power Golf, this was. Well, I'm going to say, like, this is the first one after the other two, <laughs> which makes it third. I can count. This was the, the th- third on the Wii. No, this is the third golf game period that I ever got into. Hmm. So Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And I guess it also helped that it was ridiculous golf, which I'm always fond of. Like, you could get, like, your golf club sets could be, like, plumber's equipment or, yeah, like, rollers and protractors. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It was awesome. They, like measure your shot with like with a ruler kind of thing. Yeah, like it, they all don't get me wrong. They all worked like clubs. They didn't have any other facts. Oh, oh like that, that was your club. Was USC like... got clubs that I'm swinging with a plunger, <laughs> and the putter is a pro is a is a, oh, is I like a L oh, was it, a L ruler, um, things like that. So it just became kind of fun. Like I think one of the sets was like a lightsaber set or something. Like you're, you're hitting a ball with a saber. How does that work? Heck, if I know. Well, that's good because my next golf game is themed in a very weird way. For the Super Nintendo. Is it Battle Golfer? It's called Mecha Robot Golf. Wow, I was way off. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, actually, uh, to, to go, uh, call back to our last episode, I talked about um, Ninja Golf. And I had to look it up because, you know how like when you're a kid, like you see ads in, in the magazine and you guys you get older, you're like, I don't think that was real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like maybe that was. It was real. So it really was a game. It was a game, and there's some weird reviews of it online that say, you know what, it's a terrible game, but it's worth owning because it's just so weird. Not like that Berenstain Bears golf game. No. It was totally, totally real, but not. <laughs> no, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Everyone everyone says it's real, but it's not. <laughs> but no, no, yeah, Ninja, Ninja Golf, yeah, it's like a platformer fighting your way to the hole. And then you get to the hole and you have to hit it again. It's so strange. And that was for the Atari 7800, which didn't have a whole lot of titles to begin with. I was about to say, I was honestly just amazed that a game that intricate would have been on the Atari. Yeah, the 7800 had some pretty advanced stuff. Uh, well, not adva- advanced as, as in the day was uh, like uh, Food Fight, uh, Robotron. Play Robotron? Yeah, I've played it. Yeah, so like, like a lot of like arcade stuff that was in the arcade at the time came out on the 78. Actually... We're just dragging this on. But speaking of Robotron, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure if I recommended this game to you or not, but I may as well recommend it on I, the podcast I, in general. I love Twin Stick Shooters. So. A game just came out on PS4 this week called Nex Machina. It's basically like if Robotron, Robotron and Wrestlegun had a baby. Ooh. And it plays a lot like, like Robotron does. But it's surprisingly cool and not easy at all. Huh. Which would probably be perfect for you. Yeah, so. that sounds like something I would that's something I would like where it's like, yeah, it's fun, but incredibly difficult and you'll spend all your time just trying to get adequate at the game. Got to save humans and there's hidden humans. Ooh, neat. So it is like that kind of Robotron style. Yeah, it, by the it was actually um, it was co-assisted by the guy who created Robotron. Oh, neat. From uh, Midway. Not well. I guess I'm not sure if he worked for Midway at the time or if he was just contracted by them. But mm. yeah, oh, he, at the time he was with Midway. But it was by it's by a studio called uh, House Marquee. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. No. But no. They pretty much made the name for themselves by designing really, really good twin stick shooters. Oh, cool! Awesome. I, I, I should check that out because I really like those types of games. I used to. Um, I played a lot of Robotron in high school. I got obsessed with Robotron. I don't know why. But like just trying to get as far as I could in Robotron, and I can get pretty far. But then I would hit like I would like plateau, and only get so far after that. Anyway, my next game is called Mecha Robot Golf. These are robots on the golf course because humans are terrible at golf. That's the story. <laughs> um, and there's a few different soundtracks you can choose while you play. Choose while you play the game. Um, there's like an exciting soundtrack and the relaxing soundtrack. 
This is the relaxing soundtrack. It's called Cruising by Michiro Hasuya, Asumu, Asumu Kasai, and T. Sirutani from the game Mecha Robot Golf. soothing song. This is called Cruising from the game Mecha Robot Golf for the Super Nintendo, composed by Michiharu Hasuya, Osamu Kasai, and T. Surutani. I love that part. I love that part so much. Yeah, it's a really nice, relaxing track, so much so that you really wouldn't expect the game to be about a bunch of robots playing golf and using the time to discuss how they're going to overthrow mankind. Yeah, like... All I know is like from like the opening or, or just like where it's like the uh, on this in this golf club or on this golf course humans are second class citizens to the robots. So they've already overcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're in, the robots are in charge, man. They're playing it. But, um, but I did read um, on the Wikipedia page that in Japan um, this game was promoted by like a pro golfer in Japan. But then when they brought it to the States, they took any reference of them away and they put in like a robot like bird or something. <laughs> it's like, like a little fake yeah. character. Yeah, I know, I've never even heard of this, like robot golfing. Um, and this came up because I heard about a game that came out for the PS4 or the Xbox recently called like Giant Robot Golf or something. Oh, the 100 foot high, yeah, high robot yeah, golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, w- I was watching some uh, playthrough of that on um, Game Grumps and, and it looked really, really silly. It's i uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it was a only on this, but it was meant to be a, PC, a PlayStation VR game. Yes, yes. I, and I'm watching it. I'm like, I could see it, but I, I, I at the same time, I don't, I don't think it needs to be VR. It's There's just, a lot of times where they're just shoehorning the VR and say, look guys, yeah, games no. justify VR technology when in reality... It's not necessary. Yeah. Like, my philosophy with VR tech is, has been, and will forever be, until you get, until I have the money and the technology, because I think the technology itself does exist, just money and technology to be able to play a VR game on a constantly, a treadmill that is constantly changing its orientation based oh, on where I'm facing, and I can, con- I need to be able to fully move. You want, you want full immersion in the video world. Yes, because otherwise it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Now, there was a, um, I saw this. It was like an E3 a few years ago or some kind of games expo where like they put the headset on you and you were like in like this, uh, like a hex, like you were like in a cage almost and the ground was is super, super slippery and you wear special shoes and you can actually walk and run and it held you in place. Yeah, that's the kind of, that's the kind of like I'm talking about. Like, cause like I've seen, I've never seen the thing you're describing, but there was a thing I'd see where it was an actual treadmill that you were on, but it kind of changed orientation. And you were kind of harnessed into the center of it, and you held a gun with your hand. Now, I can see actually golf games translating really, really well, like in a, from a first person perspective into VR. Oh, yeah, because you don't have to move around so much. You don't have to move around so much, and it's all about the experience of the scenery, and you can like look out to where your ball's going. Like, that would be really fun, actually. Yeah, this is the problem is most VR games that I've been seeing are usually like, hey, you're, in, you're standing in this central spot, and monsters are just coming at you in right. lanes. Punch them. Like, that doesn't... I don't need <laughs> VR for that. Like, I'm, I'm excited that the technology is becoming more available to consumers, like, like, just general consumers, but I still see it 
as just another fad. Like, um, I'm not a big fan of 3D movies, like movies in 3D. Yeah. Like, I still think that's just a fad. It's not necessary. This never done anything for me to want to go see the movie. And with, like, VR, it's, it's like, I don't like the idea of being shut out from reality. And it's, it's covering your ears. It's covering your eyes. And I would assume it's probably also kind of covering your nose too. Like it's all of your senses are being dr- factory game drowned. I, I don't like that. I don't even. I don't even like to wear headphones. That, that noise cancel. Well, that's the thing. Like for me, and this is where I where I fall on it. I feel like that's partly why I'm okay with the technology being like it is right now, and I'm doing it because because you hate reality. Well, yeah, actually, <laughs> but uh, turn, turn like, this noise off. <laughs> put me in the place I belong, RPG land. But I'm not like you have to start somewhere. So. They create what they've got right now, which may well be just you know, a guy standing and punching monsters coming down a lane. Right. But people that are truly vested in this technology, hopefully, will continue to develop it as it goes and as it becomes cost effective. And it may not be our generation, it may not even be the next generation, but there will be that generation of games, heaven forbid, if the planet is still standing. <laughs> or rather, it will be, yeah, it'll be, yeah. it'll be, will it be inhabitable, but whatever. Where you actually do have this full immersion gameplay. And it's thanks to us sitting through crappy lane punching that it exists. Um, but in addition to that, if as far as the full immersion goes, I feel like as long as it's done in a responsible way, so I don't have to worry about like being in an environment where I can get like my get like stabbed in the back or well, my yeah. Well, yeah. I guess that's like up that. to the up to the user, but I still don't like that. No, I mean like I'm I'm, I'm not saying that. I mean like the up to the user. I agree. But I'm just thinking about how it would have to work because full immersion. If you're in a situation where it's like, I'm fully immersed in the mall, <laughs> where there's nobody watching out for me. I'm just sitting here, whoa, waving oh, my okay. arms in yeah. place. Some guy just walks up and like, punches me in the rib and steals my wallet. Oh, man. I, I used to work at... I, I, I've been talking a lot about Funscape, the, the arcade I used to work at. They, they had a thing called the Virtual Realm, and it was like a, a VR headset. But this, it's so old that like this was like before VR was any good and it was like it looked like Virtua Fighter 1 graphics like it was like <laughs> these were just rectangles and stuff and you would stand inside like this uh, this little little circular kind of like cage thing and, and we put the headset on you and you'd have a joystick and there was like a boxing game <laughs> every time every time you stick a kid in there some other kid like his brother or something would just start just poking him <laughs> or like punching him or pushing him or kicking him like in the you know, below the belt, and it was just so funny. And you just have to let it happen because it was so good. Like the family, right in the family jewels. Like, oh, should we let him do that? Oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. He knows him. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> cool. That's not our place to intrude. <laughs> it was just so funny. Oh, they would just hurt themselves. Why don't you go ahead with your next track? This is a. Uh, That's our... a good way to just <laughs> lead out. Man, they would just hurt themselves. So music, golf, golf can be um can be hazardous too. Yes, it can. And it makes me wish I had Battle Golf or Yuri as my next track, which I don't. Mm. Um, well, I hope it's more uh, chill music because I'm really, really getting the vibe going here. It will be, though. I'm actually torn here. I have two tracks. I may just go with the one I most likely will use, but there's a game that from a game called Ribbit King. Ribbit King? No. I've never played that game before, but I came across a good track from that game that I contemplated throwing in there. I almost wanted to be like a bonusy, bonusy trick. But it's Rivet King. How is, is it? Rivet, like rabbit, like oh, frogs. Oh, I thought it was like construction. <laughs> Rivet King. <laughs> no, no, Rivet yeah. King. Okay. But the track that I was likely going to pick because I have never played Rivet King. Okay. Is from Mario Golf 64. Oh. And the track title is Koopa Park. And you all know who wrote this track. <laughs> but if you don't, because somebody doesn't. Koji Kondo? No, sir. Golf. Oh, no, because you just, you know, Kamala. So, Motui Sakuraba did oh, this bad boy. Oh, nice. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. Great. Yeah.
to Mario Golf 64. You are listening to a track from Cooper Park composed by Motori Sakuraba, baby. I hope you enjoyed it because I sure as heck did. Yeah, this is a good one. I, I could I can I can hear that Motoi Sakuraba like his his influence. Like I feel like the, the guitar in the background is kind of RPG ish. Yeah, it's his style is very, very distinct. And something about like chill RPG music, like like this could be like a town theme, you know? Yeah. And like, like a Dragon Quest or something. Because it's funny, before game music was all over the internet and I was we were able to just seek it out and learn about it as we needed to. I knew this was him from the moment I put the game in the system. Like, this is totally, totally Sakuraba. Yeah. I, it's unmistakable. And I was glad to be right about this. Though this feels weird not hearing it with all the bird noises and stuff because on all the course you hear like, <laughs> and like different animal sounds to kind oh. of insinuate, like, you're on a golf course. Hear like, birds. All the, all the Koopa sounds, all the sounds the Koopas make. Actually, you're not... Yeah, you're not wrong. What do they say? Sometimes, sometimes you hear like a monkey, like, <laughs> like you hear all kinds of weird random noises in the game, oh, and they're okay. just sort of like clearly Donkey Kong's relatives are just hanging out on the golf course, <laughs> and Chain Chomp. My, you might hear Chain Chomp sounds sometimes, weird noises, but the music overall is just superb. The atmosphere is spectacular, and I was very pleased with this game. This was the very first Mario Golf game, actually. Not not the Nintendo Golf game, mind you, but I mean the first like the first of like, a, of like the Mario Golf. Yeah, the Mario <laughs> Golf. Hey, the Mario. Hey, it's the Mario Golf. You guys want to come over and play the Mario Golf? I'm sure somebody out there actually calls. I'm sure. Thing. Yeah, I'm calling it that now. <laughs> hey, KB Toys, how can I help you? Yes, do you guys have the Mario Golf? Hmm. I don't know about the Mario Golf, but we have one of them. Man, I really, really like the uh, the flute in this too. It's so like just fun. It's adventurous. It's adventure sounding. It only makes you wish you could actually go on an adventure in this game, which was another thing about this that made me sad. Like, as much as I love the game, it just made me wish for another like Shining Force game. Which I'm not <laughs> it's sure. It's so funny that a golf game would make you wish for like a Shining Force game. Well, yeah, because Camelot was a developer of all those games, mm. and after they stopped working for Sega. They went to making games for Nintendo, which were all the Mario sports titles, and eventually Golden Sun. But deep down, I still wanted my return to Shining Force titles because they're such a such a spectacular series that got abandoned well before its time. And Fire Emblem thinks this is good, but it's not. Yeah, it's different. It's not the same. Exactly. Don't get me wrong. (laughs) For Fire Emblem fans, I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying I love Shining Force way more. (laughs) All right, I'm going to my fat, my final track. Your fat track. It's the fat track. I can't. I don't want. I can't call him that. This is Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf. Half tea, half lemonade. Half tea. <laughs> the old Arnold Arnie Palmer. Yeah. <laughs> God rest his soul. This is a background music two for Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf for the Sega Genesis, composed by Arnold Palmer. No. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was. No, this is Tokuhiko Uwabo. background music too from the game Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf for the Sega Genesis composed by Tokuhiko Uabo. I thought this, it was composed by Arnold Palmer. No, he did not have a hand in this. He did he did have a hand in the golf sections? I don't know, man. I think he just I think it's a cover up. No, he, he just he just lent his name to This is this is an early Genesis title. <laughs> Disappointment has set in, but the track itself is good. Yes, yes. There's a whole thing with like you know uh, sports stars just putting their names on sports games, 
back in this this, this era. That's, that is true because that was bef- now it's just Madden '98, but before it was John Madden's football, right? And Joe Montana's football. Actually, Joe Montana was done before the John Madden ones. Yeah, there's there's a few. Uh, Cal Ripken baseball. Yep. Ken Griffey Jr. baseball. Ken Griffey Jr. baseball. These are all these people that I kind of know only from their video games. John Elway football. Did we say that? Wayne Gretzky hockey. Yeah, the great one. See, I, we could probably sit here all day and do this because I, wait, I just realized something. Uh, did basketball have one like that where the, it was a specific person's name? Um, he, uh, Shaq Fu. <laughs> Let's not talk about Shaq Fu ever. That, that game needs to be purged from memory, which I can't even anymore because a sequel's coming out. Was it? Oh, weird. Wasn't there? There's was a Michael Jordan platformer too. Wait, what? Yeah, Chaos in the Windy City. Oh, you're right. It <laughs> yeah. was on Super Nintendo. That's right. It was oh horrible. Oh, God. I never played it, though. I remember Nintendo Power covering it, though. Oh, of course. But now I'm trying to think. I think basketball just had the EA line that where it was just whatever two teams were in the championship game. Right, right. So, like, Bulls versus Lakers, Bulls versus somebody, Bulls versus somebody else. Uh, well, yeah, I guess the era of Michael Jordan just steamrolling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Made for very uninteresting game titles. Oh, yeah. uh, the soundtrack for Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf is really chill. It's super chill. It's very uh, minimal. You know, there's not a whole lot of uh, voices being used. Blink, and, blink, blink. And often when you hear that, you think it's because these voices are being reserved for sound effects, and there's a lot of a lot of sound effects and explosions going on, and that's not happening so much with the golf game. <laughs> I'm just I'm just mesmerized by the bling, 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 bling. Yeah, yeah. If you listen closely, there's these little grace notes being used by the um, right there. I don't know what this what this device is. It's probably just like a sound chip just being made right, to produce right. the sound. So so the, the the Yamaha FM sound chip is doing those chords, but in the background, that's yeah, there it is again. Yeah, that's the uh, the 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 P. I have lost a lot of sleep. It's okay, folks. For those who are like Rob is PSG. like starting to taper That's the PSG. off. So Rob the... <laughs> got no sleep last night because his lo- our lovable co-host Elvis has not been feeling so well, and yeah. he puked into like the late night. That's so, right. I just he ate something. He ate something bad. Okay. So, but the show must go on, and Rob is insistent I, on doing I'm it today instead of getting some sleep. I'm gonna do it, and just everyone just focus, focus <laughs> in on that. Those little plinky sounds. People of Earth, give Rob your energy, please. Well, they're like they're hidden, like you don't know they're there, and then you listen, and all of a sudden they're there. I don't even know what you even meant. Yeah, I mean, like they're like they're they're hidden. They're hidden behind the the, the chords. Oh, the bleep bleeps. The bleep bleeps. Oh yeah, I agree with that. I thought you were talking about the people of Earth. Yeah, you know, the dog vomit's there forever, and it smells <laughs> terrible. <laughs> no, so yeah, so the Yamaha and the Genesis had the Yamaha FM chip. Um, and then alongside of it is the um, the Sega uh, PSG that they use in the, in the Master System. Huh. And they use them together. And I think they're using that chip to make those little plinky sounds in the background. Well, whoever came up with this idea, thank you, because That's cool. to me, that makes the track. Okay. Maybe one might not agree with me, but they would be wrong to not. Yeah, they're, they're all, they don't know what they're talking about for now. Right, right. I know, I'm behind you. Bing, bing. All right. It is now time for the bonus round. He's going in. I think he's going to set up the shot for, for the bonus round. Be quiet, everyone. Thank you so much about the playing of my game. <laughs> That's not going to come over very well over the microphone. No, it's not. That wasn't intended <laughs> to be a golf clap. <laughs> that was a great golf clap. Yes, it was. Nothing else. And the bonus round is the part of the show where we play covers and remixes based on the theme. We got some golfy themes. <laughs> Very golf delicious. Golf, golf and tootin. What's that? <laughs> golf and tootin. <laughs> Rootin, tootin, golf and lootin. I'm just going to embrace this uh, fatigue. So, what is your track? Well, I almost forgot it, but thankfully I did not. But there's no way in hell we could go through an entire episode devoted to golf and I have and I not bring up Kirby's Dream Course, yes. the game that ruined so many friendships for me. Yeah, this before Mario cool Party, this was the friendship <laughs> ruiner. You, yeah, Mario Party is like the ultimate like, like you are no longer part of the family. <laughs> get out of my house! <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I've literally been told by people to get out of their dorm room. I've been told to get out of people's houses. I've been told to get out of people's beach houses. I've been told to get out of a lot of different locations because of Mario Party. You will be removed from too many games. 
because of Mario Party. <laughs> it is Mario very Party. possible. Don't yeah. don't be surprised. <laughs> don't have like Mario Party up in the game room and they'll eject me from the room. You're right behind Keith Apicary. <laughs> <laughs> I'll upstage him at this rate with that uh, with the Mario Party aspect. But this track is called Iceberg Ocean Remix. And it is composed by a person that goes by the name of Well Licked On. I know, right? I know, we're just going to play this track. <laughs> Welcome back. You just listened to the Iceberg Ocean Remix from the Course 8 stage of Kirby's Dream Course, my beloved game, which I never beat because I was too busy doing versus mode. And mm. it was composed by a person that goes by the name of Well Licked On. I think it's it's German. It looks German. Nine? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll look up some of the um, some of their, their credits online and, and have them on our website. Um, but that was really great. That was a uh, three-four rhythm. We don't we don't often have a lot of off-time signatures, especially in the bonus round. Well, I aim to be different. <laughs> I like to be the person who says, "Guys, that thing right there, we're going to do that finally." Well, I'm going to take us back to Mario Golf. This is no. Uh, yes. Why would you do that? Because this is the Shy Guy Desert remix from Mario Golf '64, and this is remixed by Ice Ferno. Oh, in that case, it's okay.
This has been the Shy Guy Desert Remix from the game Mario Golf 64. This is remixed by Iceferno. You can find him at iceferno.bandcamp.com. I love how the length of the track legitimately simulated what it is like to be lost in the desert. Yes. <laughs> the track itself was really good. I just thought it was funny that as it kept going, Rob and I were like just kind of checking our own personal devices. <laughs> and yeah. I would just look up every once in a while and go, it's still going. Yeah, that's a nice <laughs> oh track. God. It really reminded me of like, I don't know why like there's so many uh, ocean sounds for being in a desert. Maybe that's the Mirage talking. Yeah, maybe. But it's a really nice beach track. Like it's a nice like nighttime beach tune. Well, the shy guy, of course, I guess you did say it in the name itself, but it was a desert. So maybe he was just going for the whole idea of like, you know, sandy doom with a touch of aquatic relief hmm. right around the horizon. Is shy guy a playable character? Nope. I don't think he's ever been playable in the golf games. He only recently started becoming playable in the games in general with Mario Kart. Oh, that's so. a shame. He's one of my favorite Nintendo characters. I like I him. Doki Doki character. Yeah, sure. Doki Doki character. So for more information on the artist in the bonus round part of the show, go to rhythmandpixels.com and check out their band camps, bios, and everywhere else you can get the music and support the artists. Thank you for joining us on the Rhythm and Pixels Video Game Music Podcast, Episode 9-1, Golf Music. Amazing. It's so good. We hope that you enjoyed this particular episode. Yeah, this has been great. I've liked it. It was brought to you in part by Crest Toilet Paper and Toothbrush Manufacturer. It's interesting when the toothpaste manufacturer also makes... Toilet paper it makes you think. Yes, and for those who are surprised and think he totally didn't mean that, he must have flubbed. That's you fine. are incorrect. Yeah. Crest actually makes toilet paper now. They make they do. It's minty, it up. minty fresh, minty fresh <laughs> bum wipe. That's a surprise. That, that's a fun surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep talking like this. You can't no. probably pick up half of it. Probably that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I've I've been wanting to do a golf show, and now and didn't even realize it. Oh, that's how how it goes with this show. We come up with topics. Yeah. You question why they make sense, and then by the end, it's like, oh, it totally makes sense. Listen to those sweet lyrics, those sweet licks. Well, we've how got... do we even have lyrics on songs? I don't even know. Oh, I, I felt like the um the the one the mecha robot golf one that I did it sounded like it was lyrical. All right, I can see that. Um, but I couldn't think of any other lyrics other than the words like "Let's go golfing, let's go golf." Robot. <laughs> Let's take over the world and destroy mankind. But yeah, it's just honestly, I was pleased with this episode. And almost like at this point, we end up going down the entire line of sports. But I can't imagine too many others having as awesome music types options as this. I mean, they they, sport they do. But I really, I really like this style of like jazzy kind of just cheesy, calming, calming type stuff. Really, really fun. Um, yeah. So. If you want to get in contact with us, if you'd like to like to say hi, or if you have you know suggestions for the show, why don't you send us an email? Rhythm and Pixels at hotmail.com. And if you'd like more information on the show and a full track listing from the episodes, what's that up? What's that uh, URL? You can write to us at rhythmandpixels.com. And um, yeah, if you check us out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, we're all at Rhythm and Pixels. Just look us up. It's all one word is how we're going to come up. And if you're listening to us on iTunes, thank you very much. If you could hit that subscribe button, that would help us out. Tell your friends. Let them know. We rock. You rock. Let us all rock together. Yeah, but this show wouldn't happen without you. (laughs) That's a lie. (laughs) It would happen, just it'd get no listeners. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, if, if you do uh, like the show and you're feeling generous, go over to patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels and uh, hit the donation button. That'd be, uh, be helpful to us. Not necessary, but it would definitely um, goes a long way towards paying some of these bills for the show. 
for the show. And our armaments for eventual world domination. <laughs> Crush it. Crap. Yeah, Pernell, I, I, I mean, I mean, our baked goods. Our baked goods for the child. <laughs> child. I'm imagining like, fundraiser. I'm like, hey, support. Pernell, what'd you do with the Patreon money? And you got like sunglasses on and like big gold chains around your neck. You're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Nope. Uh, this, no, nah, this is fake gold. Um, this is one of those scratch, scratches right off. Don't scratch my gold. Absolutely. Uh, I think this is this is your month to take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So in the next few episodes, I think we have some guests, um, some more guests coming on, some musical guests maybe. Excited Which, about that. Likewise. And honestly, unexpected at that. It just yeah. kind of came out of nowhere. That's the kind of things you want. Like, hey, we like your show. Can we talk with you too? Like, please. Yeah, and you and I are going to uh, guest on the Forever Sound Version podcast uh, in, in the next month. I'm really excited about that. Knuckles are cracking because it's yeah. time. It's go time. Got to get our buddy ship collaboration going once more. Yeah, and I'd like to do something with the VGM jukebox. Um, those those guys are real chill. I'm in a chill kind of mood. In the event that you guys listen to this show and you hear this. What do you think? It'd be cool. Otherwise, I guess we'll have to reach out and ask them ourselves. Yeah, we'll reach out. Um, I have nothing else for you, Pernell. I have... But I have everything for the listeners. It's all on the table. Fine. I, I don't want anything anyway. Shoot. Take my big, Let's... my Uniball Vision Elite <laughs> ink pen <laughs> trademark and go. I got to tell you, when you leave, um, the post-it notes you bring, you leave like ink on the table. And it wipes off, but it's, I always see like the handwriting. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. Like the the thoughts that were here, yeah, are now gone. I'm like, oh, battle golf for you. That's right. <laughs> so I almost gotta find a way to get that into an episode later, just to remedy the fact that we didn't put battle golf for oh, Yui on a golfing episode. I just love the name Yui. Oh yeah, I'm probably mispronouncing. It's probably just you. Hey, why don't you and I pick up our shirts and get on out of here? Sounds like a plan to me because I got more tea to consume, and it's only yeah. 9 p.m. But you've been listening to the Rhythm and Pixels video game music podcast. I am Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernil. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful week. And remember, tis the season to sweat your living daylights off. But when it's not exactly too hot outside, it is also perfect weather to get out and do something fun. Maybe not play golf because who can afford the lyrics or make silly <laughs> faces like Rob's doing right now. But just get out, play some frisbee golf. I don't know. Go for a hike. Do something to take advantage of the weather that we've got, and I don't know, listen to some sweet podcasts while you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs>